we looked at your social media and you haven't done that many posts specifically calling out Russian attacks on civilian areas. You haven't called Vladimir Putin a war criminal, but you have called Benjamin Netanyahu no, a war criminal. No, actually we did. Yeah. In, my, in my very first remarks about the Ukraine war, we condemned... Uh, Vladimir Putin's a war criminal. We, we, yes, we did uh, and uh, condemn... And Bashar al-Assad's a war criminal. Uh, yes, in so many words. Yes, we What's have said as so much. So you call Netanyahu one, which I think he is. Oh, but absolutely. Is Putin a war criminal? So what we said about Putin was that uh, his invasion of Ukraine is uh, criminal. Mm. Uh, Mehdi Hassan in the disemboweling of Jill Stein. Hold it's on. a criminal and murderous war. And he's a war criminal who should be on trial. Well, by, implica- by implication. You're struggling but here to say something say, very yes, simple. Well, this well, is why people say. have their doubts about yes. you in Russia. Well, why is Benjamin Netanyahu a war criminal but not Vladimir Putin? Well, as, as John F. Kennedy said, <laughs> we must not be afraid to, we must not negotiate out of fear and we must not fear mm. to negotiate. Mm. We knew what, John what, F. Kennedy. What, you what? are no John F. Kennedy, no Jill Stein. Jane. All right, one more. If you want to be an effective yeah. world leader, you don't start by uh, name calling and hurling. So, epithets. how will President Stein negotiate with Israel then if you've called Netanyahu a war criminal? Well, because he very clearly is a oh, war criminal. So, Putin criminal. clearly isn't a war criminal. Well, we don't have a decision, put it this way, by the International what? Criminal Court. Yes, we do. On yes, actually, for we, his actually, arrest. actually, you're wrong. There's an oh, arrest warrant for, for Putin. The, for there the, isn't yet an arrest warrant for Netanyahu. So, yeah. why is Putin not a war criminal, but Netanyahu is? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What Either you're a war criminal or you're not. Is Actually, Vladimir Putin a war criminal? Uh, in in so many words, yes, he yeah, is. I don't know what so many words are. Butch, is Vladimir Putin a war criminal? Let it, me say that that whatever yes you no. think he is, if you <laughs> want to pull the oh yeah. I'm asking what you well, think. Well, if you for uh, if you I'm are not. a world leader, you don't begin your conversation by calling someone a war criminal unless you have. So why you have you called Biden clear, and Netanyahu war criminals? Because we have a clear strategy. <gasps> That's Jill Stein dust just yeah. laying. <laughs> Post-interview Jill Stein dust. Hey, I wonder if this guy has anything to say about that. (laughs) (laughs) What do you spy? What do you spy, Malcolm Man? Oh, sorry. I have my binoculars out because I was looking for some logic (laughs) in that ridiculous statement. By Jill Stott. I, I, can you dance uh-huh. any harder for... Hold on, just stop. What did they give her in that dinner that she had with uh, Vladimir Putin right. that was so delicious <laughs> that years later she will not insult or, or diss him or say anything other than how wonderful that dinner was from Russia today? Because I mean... that was a ludicrous conversation between her and uh, Mehdi Hassan yeah. where she just would not say it in so many words and so many words yes. Netanyahu went, oh yeah it's not that many two words, words. war oh, yeah. criminal <laughs> yeah two words oh, um, God. yeah you retweeted bigger binoculars <laughs> yeah <laughs> you retweeted Jill Stein's refusal will call Putin a war criminal is not surprising at all she's a Russian asset and everyone knows it she has one mission and one mission only to help elect the Kremlin favorite candidate Donald Trump mm-hmm. period here she is again period. four years later Right. Absolutely. And, you know, again, look at everyone who was at her table. Jill Stein, General Michael Flynn, Mm -hmm. all of them have turned into raging pro Putin phobes. And they understand that to be close to the absolute Sauron like idiocracy that Donald Trump will unleash, which is, you know, the Sauron eye of stupidity, (laughs) they want to put Donald Trump in office. Jill Stein said in 2016, the goal of electing Trump and defeating Hillary Clinton was to make things so awful in America that the Green Party would look like a future option. But, you know, she loves caviar, apparently. (laughs) Malcolm, can I, and I've said this many times, I just want to thank you again for uh, the plot to hack America because you were there first. I mean, obviously, Rachel Maddow, Joy Reid, a lot of our friends did a great job, but you were there first. And I think it's largely because of people like you, and you specifically, that we're not susceptible to this in 2024. When Putin comes out and says, I want Kamala Harris to win, we're like, oh, bitch, please. (laughs) You know, like, we know you're for the guy that's going to give you Ukraine. Like, you know, but that's part of it, isn't it? Is you can't disinform when when the public is informed and has read Plot to Hack America. Yes, yeah, very true. And, uh, you know, and if anybody out there has Wikipedia rights, get up on there and tell them that I was the first person 
to really identify this as a Russian intelligence operation. And that was the first book written. I mean, the next book came out 18, 24 months after Plot to Hack America came out. Uh, because the news media, let's be honest, is really slow. <laughs> I know. Really this is when slow. I first fell in love with you. You were on Late at Night with Brian Williams with your sleepy sailor eyes. <laughs> just talking truth oh God, to America. Tired. Yeah. <laughs> but I love this. You retweeted Republicans against Trump. Here's my favorite word. New. Meta, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, announced Monday it has banned Russian state media broadcaster RT over foreign interference activity. Well, it's not new to you or <laughs> to a lot of us, but thanks for... I'm counting, yeah. on, I'm counting on my fingers. How many years does it take to do this? It's apparently a decade. It takes almost a decade to figure out that you've been played. And, you know, again, this is where I'm starting to find fault. You know, I was in news media. Uh, I'm starting to find that it's absolutely ludicrous that there are vested interests out there who believe that, you know, uh, that Russian disinformation was really a, 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 a misinformation operation on the part of Democrats because Trump would say Russia, Russia, Russia. And because if 75 million people are uninformed, misinformed, and believe a lie, why should the New York Times take that credibly? Why should the news media take that credibly? So, uh, you know, we're having this exact same problem right now with the fact that Donald Trump is clearly mentally unfit. He is demented. I mean, that discussion you had a little earlier about, you know, Bagram Air Base in Alaska. You know, I mean, he can't tell the difference between Afghanistan and Alaska right now and had it been Joe Biden, yeah. everyone would have been saying he has to be out tomorrow. Thank you. Donald Trump can be insane and be left in there because the media said, well, he's the Republican nominee. And he didn't misspeak once. He said right. it like six times. Right. Like So, by the way, you uh, speaking of foreign assets, Elon Musk said, why are so many people raging for the machine? And you retweeted Nick, who said, you're a Nepo billionaire with a social media empire and government military contracts. You are the machine, you stupid C-word. Okay, I just like <laughs> the use of C-word there. Particularly. <laughs> it's <a good> word. <laughs> but I was that's... saying, Malcolm, after we win, after Kamala wins, we, we talked to Bob Seska about this. We have to clear out the traitors in our country you know that are that are you know working against the best interests of the united states you know project 2025 was their roadmap to disassemble government and turn it into a political machine for a dictator right essentially an american version of the nazi party uh or putin's one russia you know free uh, united russia party uh but we need to go back and install the guardrails mm -hmm. so that these things cannot happen again. Yeah. We need to have really firm rules and laws and fix the Supreme Court so that the Supreme Court cannot engineer the destruction of American democracy. These are common sense yeah. things that we, through legislation, legislation have to enact into law. And the, then you need to have, look, reading people the, out there who are violating laws might get fines that were established in the Gilded Age, right? Yeah. Of $5,000. No, we need to start implementing laws that start with the letter, you know, when someone attacks government with the letter B, right? A billion dollar fine yeah. for this modern age. And reading, being the Supreme Court, the extraordinary lengths John Roberts went. Yeah. To protect yeah. Donald Trump is is vomitous, but anyway. Um, yeah. so Malcolm, let me ask you. We were, t of course, you've seen uh, whether it's Sean Hannity, the J.D. Vance, Trump blaming Democrats for two different white Republicans' apparent assassination attempts of Donald Trump. So I got to ask you about this latest guy, who uh, first of all was a Trump voter in 2016, then got mad at him was for uh, Nikki Haley and Ramaswamy. You tell me how that's a liberal or Democrat, but so they're saying they're citing his support for Ukraine. And I'm going, that didn't used to be a liberal issue. Plenty of Republicans support supporting Ukraine, right? So they're trying well, to use, yeah. right. Apparently you guys haven't dug very deeply into my timeline this week <laughs> to see that half of the right wing saw. media, starting with Gateway Pundit, I saw. and that, that moron Jack Posobiec accused me of being an associate of the attempted assassin. Yeah, I know I because saw that. This, 
I don't dignify it by rereading it again. I know you. Uh, okay, yeah, don't reread it again. Just wait for my lawsuit. Yeah. Because, you know, people have taken shots at me before. But to put me in the crosshairs, people were out there saying, the FBI should arrest you. We should try to do something about you. Now you're going to get a fight. Yeah. Because coming out there and saying he was an associate of mine, this guy hung around TV, was a well-known nut. Yeah. A well-known nut who would walk up to you wearing an American flag bandana and try to put people into the International Legion, which he was not allowed to enter. And he never got anyone in because our people don't go to Kiev. You go to another part of the country. Yeah. And he was just made him reinvented himself in self-importance. I have an op-ed coming out here very soon in a major paper yeah. about how people, the criminals, crusaders, and crazies would show up in Ukraine and try to reinvent themselves. Yeah. We have no control over nuts, just as much. But you know what? Many of these people are conservative. Yeah. These Thank last you. two shooters were both conservatives. Anyone that supports Vivek Ramaswamy. Thank you. I, and voted you know, for Trump. I mean, come on. And looking for <laughs> right. Nikki Haley to rescue them. Right. It's so, just absolutely ludicrous. Let's